When trading the wheel strategy, there are, of course, tremendous gains and there are some risks. For example, what do you do if a stock that you own tanks and you can sell calls against it? Number two, what do you do if the overall market crashes and now you're stuck in five positions and you can sell calls against it? This is what we're going to talk about today and I will show you three very specific examples, three of the trades that I am in right now. And then I'll also show you how to avoid getting in trouble if you can. First of all, let's talk about the wheel strategy. In order to do this, I'm bringing up uh, JWN. So JWN Nordstrom. And uh, if you're not familiar with the wheel strategy, here it is in a nutshell. Uh, number one, you are selling put options and you're collecting premium. Number two, if the stock dips below the strike price of uh, the option that you have sold, then you might get a sign. And what does this mean? It means that you have to buy shares at a certain price. Number three, the idea here is that you are selling call options, uh, collecting more premium until you are getting called away. And this is how the wheel is turning around. So that is here the main idea. Now, let me give you a very specific example. We are looking at JWN. When JWN was going sideways like this, I did sell puts with a strike price of 30. And you see, shortly after I did it, I did it, I believe, on this day. So if you're zooming in a little bit, I think I did it on this day. Uh, let's just see if we can zoom in. And as you can see, after that, the stock has been dropping. And I got assigned at a strike price of 30. And at some point we were trading what at around maybe $26. So again, we will talk now about three scenarios. Number one, we will talk about what happens if the stock dips a little bit. And when I say dips a little bit, what do I mean by this? I want to say at the time when I entered this trade, we were trading probably somewhere around $31. As you can see from the $31, we went as low as $26. So here we are talking about an 18.6%. So let's talk about a 20% drop. So let's say what happens if the stock drops around 20%. So this is something that can happen after you're getting assigned. And at this point, well, there's two things. If you can sell calls above the assigned price, then you should do this. So the assigned price here was 30. And so the idea was to or is to sell calls at a level of 30 or if you can 31 or 32 and so on. So here's what I did as we were dipping down here. See, at first uh, we were only dipping to around $29 and this is where there was enough premium to sell 30 calls. And this is where you're collecting more premium. At some point, you might be at a level where you cannot get enough premium for the 30 calls. And what do I mean by getting enough premium? Well, for me personally, I have a criteria that I want to make at least 30% annualized on the put or calls that I'm selling. So on any premium that I sell, I want to make 30% annualized. If it is less, I'm not willing to sell calls. And this is what can happen. Now, for you, it might be different. You see, there's many variations of the strategy. And for you, your plan might be different. This is why I have here the mark on my desk that says, follow your plan. So I'm just telling you my plan. And for my plan is that I will not sell any calls or puts if I'm not getting at least 30% annualized. So what do I do if the stock price is hovering at a level where I cannot get 30% annualized. Well, let me show you exactly what I do. In this moment, you have to sit on your hands. There's nothing for me to do until I see that the stock is coming back. So let's switch back here and moving towards my strike price and I can get enough premium again. And this is exactly what I did here with JWN Nordstrom. So let me show you again. I told you I'll show you three examples. So this here is the first. So Nordstrom, I'm switching over to my account. I'm going on the annual activity. We start looking here at Nordstrom. And as you can see right now on the stock, I'm down around $1,800 and I have been able by selling puts and calls to collect a total of $10,000 in premium. 
So if I would close the trade right now, I would have $8,500. So obviously this here is still a good scenario because the stock after I got assigned and after it was tanking, I've been able to sell calls multiple times. In fact, today I have been able to sell a $30 call and I collected another $1,000. Well, to be exact, it was $990 that I collected in premium. And this contributed to the overall slightly more than $10,000 that I collected in premium here on JWN. First case scenario, what to do if the stock that you sold puts on tanks? Well, if it tanks around 30, uh, 20%, so let's say uh, 15% to 20%, you should be able to sell calls and you got to wait until it comes back to the strike price. So now let's talk about scenario number two. Let me come back to you here. Scenario number two, what happens if the stock dips more than these 20%, what if the stock tanks by 30%? So second scenario, and I wanna show you again, a very specific example. So here I wanna show you LVS. So LVS, uh, let's just switch uh, over here to a weekly chart and I'm zooming out a little bit. You see, this is the weekly chart of LVS. As you can see, Las Vegas Sands has been trading probably below between $50 and let's just say here. So this is a range of $50 to $70. I believe this was back in May when I saw that we were in a range trading here and I sold puts, so I sold puts with a strike price of 58. Now, as you can see, after I did this, LVS kept dropping. If you see from a strike price of 58, LVS went as low as 36. Now let's use a, a handy dandy calculator to get an idea how much this drop is. So we're talking about $22 that this stock dropped and we divide it by 58. So this means a total, a drop of 38%. So again, what do we do then when we have a 38%? And again, it's different for everybody. I urge you to follow your plan. I'm telling you right now, my plan going back to the stock is, is if I see it dropping by at least 30% from the assigned strike price. So if we are going for $58 times 0 0.7, so this would be a drop of 38%. Uh, so if it goes to around $40, so once it drops 30% and it is around $40, I like to do something that I call flying a rescue mission. Now, flying a rescue mission is uh, just a, a fancier name of the so-called DCA, the dollar cost averaging. So what does it mean? Well, I do not simply buy more shares, but I keep selling puts at a lower level because the idea here is that I want to collect more premium and if the stock keeps dropping, I will get assigned more shares. Now, when I'm flying the rescue missions, I do it in one third. What does this mean? Well, uh, if for example, in LVS, originally I would have sold 60 contracts, then I would do the rescue mission in another 20, 20, and 20. So what does this mean? Here in this particular example, I was actually looking for LVS to make a temporary bottom which it did uh, right here. So not exactly at around 40, but I want to say probably at around 38. When this happened, I was selling more puts at a level of 37. And again, only for one third of my original size. So as you can see, it kept dropping below 37 and therefore I did get assigned additional shares. Now this is where the magic of dollar cost averaging comes in. And this way I have been able to lower my cost basis from originally $58 to $51.42. Now, as you can see right now, it is not enough to actually sell calls, but I have been able to sell more puts at these levels. So as I saw more support at 36 and 35, I have been selling more puts for, again, another third of my position, and I have not gotten yet, gotten yet assigned. 
So this is where I want to show you what exactly this looks like if you are looking here at the PL. So here is LVS, and you see I collected a total of $7,175 in premium. Now, for the stock right now, for the stock, I'm down $29,622. So if I would close this position right now, I would realize a loss of $22,000. And as you can see, this is where, what did we say earlier? $22 divided by 58. So this has dropped by 38%. So that, of course, is not good. So as the stock has dropped here, the first scenario that we had with JWN, as long as we are dropping 15 to 20%, no problem. When we are dropping 30 to 40%, this is when I fly a rescue mission and I can sell more puts, collect premium, and I have to wait until it comes back up. If I would realize this loss right now, I would be setting at a loss of around $22,000, to be exact, $22,538. Keep in mind that the account that I'm trading is a larger account. And I know that recently there have been some discussions if if I can call it a $250,000 account or a $500,000 account or a million dollar account. So here, here's what happened. On January 11th, I opened an account with $250,000 in this account. I opened a margin account. So on January 11th, that gave me a buying power of $500,000. So I've been calling it a $500,000 is it a $500,000 account right now? Well, I realized some profits. There are some unrealized profits in there. So you can call it whatever you want to do. I called it lovingly the $500,000 account. You get the idea. I started with $250,000 in cash, used the buying power here, and this is what the account is. So I just wanted to put this in perspective. So if I realized a loss of $22,000 based on the original equity that I put in, it's probably what around eight or 9% of the original equity. So two scenarios, and I promise you that I will talk about three scenarios. And then we'll also talk about what happens if all of the positions are getting assigned. So the first scenario was down 15 to 20%. The second scenario was down 30 to 40%. Now let's talk about the third scenario. And the third scenario is if the stock keeps tanking. So let's go back here and let's talk about the famous or infamous ride trade. So let me show you what happened here. This is where I told you that I entered this trade in February 2021. I violated my rules and we'll talk about this. I sold puts with a strike price of $21.50. And as you can see, right at this point was probably trading around $24 and has been going down ever since. Right now, as of today, it is trading at around $5. So this means that right now the stock is down $19. We divide this by 24%. So this is a whopping 80%. So scenario three, what do you do when the stock is down 80%? Well, first of all, it did not go down 80% right away. At first, we had scenario one, where the stock went down 15 to 20%. So what do you do there? Sell calls. And this is what I've been doing. In the beginning, I was able to sell some calls on a ride and collect more premium. Now, then we had scenario two, where we were going down around 30% to 40%. And this is where I have been flying rescue missions. Now, while flying these rescue missions, I have been able to lower my cost basis from originally 2150 to 1579. And right now, currently, my cost basis is at 1286. However, this is where all good, but right, kept going down. And this is where we are now down, what, 80%. So. What can we do here right now? Well, again, everybody has a different plan and uh, you follow your plan. So in your plan, there might be, you might have stated, you know what, when I'm down a certain percentage on a stock, I'm cutting it loose. Following my plan, I'm looking at the fundamentals and I still believe that Wright can sell trucks and I believe it is a great truck for a fleet. However, right now, the stock price is not reflecting it. 
So let's talk about this. This is where an original short-term investment became a long-term investment because I have been in this trade for quite a while, as you know, as you have been following me. So what can I do? Well, two possibilities. I can either right now liquidate all this and take a loss. But let's take a look at some numbers first. So if you're looking at right, as you can see right now on the stock, I'm down $119,150. And I've been able to collect $17,184 of premium. So this leaves me a net loss if I would liquidate this trade right now, if I would liquidate it of $102,000. So scenario number one, if the stock drops 15 to 20%, no big deal right now. If I would close JWN, I would still make a profit. Number two, if the stock drops 30% to 40%, as it happened with LWS, I would realize a loss of right now $22,000 and $22,000 based on the original money that I put in would be around what? 8.8%. So let's just say this is uh, where I would realize a loss of 9%. Now, scenario three, this is when the stock is down 80%. And if I would sell right now, I would realize a loss of $102,000. And $102,000 based on the original $250,000 that I put in the account, 250, 40.8%, it's a 41% loss. Obviously, this is kind of out. And this is if I would sell this right now, which I'm not planning to do. Where does this leave us from here? Okay, first of all, now you know that there are risks when you're trading the wheel strategy because the stock is going down. As long as the stock is just going down 15 to 20%, no big deal. If it is going down 30 to 40%, I would even say not a big deal. The ouch happens when the stock goes down 80%. So now the key question is, how can you avoid this? And this is where you might have heard me saying it before. Stock selection is key. And when it comes to stock selection, you want to grow for value stocks. This is where you want to make sure that you are having value stocks. What are value stocks? Let's just actually take a look here at LVS. I'm going to, to go to my iPad here. I will bring up Google Finance. Let's take a look at JWN. So JWN, if we look at this stock and if we look at the financials and we look at the annual financials here, obviously 2020 was kind of an oops for many, many companies, including JWN. However, as you can see, the financial performance here, we see the revenue before 2020 has been slightly increasing. Nothing crazy like this, right? So slight increase. And we see that also the profits have been increasing. And this is a, a sign for a value stock, right? You, you, you grow the top line and you grow the bottom line and you do it slow and steadily. So let's take a look at LVS. Las Vegas Sands, we take a look at the annual data and we see, wow, actually, if you just look at the annual data, this is even looking better than JWN. Do you see the financial performance? Do you see how this 2016, 17, 18, even 19 has been slowly but steadily increasing. And so have the profits. See, solid profits here. So this is where overall looking good. For me, this is a sign of a value stock. Now let's take a look at right. This is where you see where I made the mistake. What happened here? Because if we look at right, this is a, a spec company. And if you look at, at annual, revenue, we see that there's no revenue because it's a startup. They have not yet produced the trucks and they have not sold any trucks. So therefore, what do we see here? There is absolutely no revenue, none, and a loss. So that's where we see uh, quite a big of loss. And so I should have never bought this company. I should have never traded it. I did. And I'm showing you this so that you can learn from my mistake. So I'm making here this mistake so that you can learn from it and make sure that you are not trading these stocks. Now, here's the cool thing. As you know, I'm using our software, the PowerX Optimizer. So if you go to the PowerX Optimizer and we are looking at certain stocks that are popping up here on the scanner right now. And for example, we look at a stock like Match Group. See what, what we did, what we built in here, 
so that you don't have to just blindly say, oh, okay, this is a good put to sell, so let's just sell it. No, no, no. First of all, you want to always sell it at certain support, at solid support number. But the most criteria, important criteria is number one, do you want to own this stock? And you see, since I believe that Google Finance is great, we built in this little megaphone right here. And when you click on the megaphone, what it does, it brings you actually to this company. And so let's take a look at the company. Oh, this actually, <laughs> all right. Here I picked a company, which uh, I believe is probably uh, right in between value and growth stock. Because you see, we are growing, but the growth, if you see, we grow from 1 billion to 2 billion. So doubling in uh, what, four years, it's not crazy. This is why I say it's probably right between here, a value and a growth stock, solid profits here. So number one criteria, is this a company that I want to own? Yes. Do I want to own it at this price? 152.50? No, I do not want to own it at this price. Now let's see if there's another one that uh, just popped up. There's, uh, for example, luxury goods. Let's take a quick look. Let me just switch to annual so that we see the revenue. And there you see, okay, pretty good. Not bad. In 2020, the revenue was going down and they reported a loss. Well, 2020, that's what happened to many companies. But then 2021 seems that they're right back on track. So do I want to own the company? Yeah, why not? I mean, this looks like a solid growth company. Do I want to own it at this price at 37? Yeah, maybe, maybe. What do you see recently? It's been kind of in a downtrend. So it could break out to the upside or it continues to uh, the downtrend. Anyhow, so before we get too carried away, number one, the wheel strategy is fascinating and you need to know the risk. Number two, what do you do if a stock falls? Well, three scenarios here. Number one, if it falls 15 to 20%, not a big deal. You should be able to get out of this with a profit. Number two, um, what happens if it uh, drops 30 to 40%? Well, this is when you have to sit on your hands and wait if it comes back. If it doesn't, you might have to realize a loss which might be anywhere between 8 per to 10% of your account. Number three, if you pick the wrong company, and it goes down, you are stuck in this position. And now a short term investment became a long term investment. And now you got to see, does the company still have solid fundamentals so that it can eventually turn around? And with Lordstone Motors, I believe it does. Now, you might disagree, and that's fine. This is why follow your plan. So if you look at this company and say, nope, I don't believe in it, then you should actually get out of this stock. Only if you still believe that there's potential. And honestly, for me, if I'm looking at this stock and see that it's trading at $5, what is the upside potential and what is the downside potential? Well, the downside potential is can go to zero. What is the upside potential? Can it go to $10, $12, $15? I believe it is possible based on what I see. This is why I will keep holding on to right for now. However, if it does dip below $4, I have a very specific plan of what to do then. Anyhow, so hope that helps that you understand the risks of the wheel strategy and you also understand how to minimize the risk. And keep in mind, when trading, there's always risk. You cannot eliminate the risk, but you can minimize the risk. And now you know whether the wheel strategy is something that you should be trading based on your risk tolerance or if maybe a strategy where you have credit spreads, debit spreads or something like this might be better suited. Hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video.